This is the Girl Moringa Podcast, show number four. So I uh, started eating the seeds, consuming the leaf for myself, um, dehydrating it, drinking the teas, powdering the dehydrated leaf, making capsules myself at home with wow. a uh, little capsule machine that I have that makes a hundred of them at a time. And taking those really improved my health, my energy levels. And I started using it not just for daily life, but um, like you were saying, for people using it as warriors as for endurance. Yeah. I'm really happy to introduce to you a good friend of mine now that has been a part of the Grow Moringa Collective and even the Moringa Growers Co-op, which was an organization that I started previous to the collective. He was reaching out to me three, four years ago when I was going to the farmer's market in Newport Ritchie. Every Tuesday, they had a Tasty Tuesdays farmer's market with Jim Kovaleski and a few of the local growers. They invited me out to the market I was attending and that's for some reason that's how that's how brian got into my ecosystem he started reaching out he started attending my live videos he sent uh, on youtube as well as uh just going to the website ordering moringa getting some seeds and asking questions commenting and texting me because i've been having my my text service available for a few years now so he reached out to me and we became friends over the last couple years he's actually uh an integral role in our fulfillment by members development, you know, because when we got out of the winter time in March, we, we were getting cutting orders, cutting orders, cutting orders. And we were figuring out how to delegate these orders to members. And Brian was one of the first members to comment in the members area. He made a post and he said, Hey, I have cuttings. If anybody wants to pick any up or make a trade, I have some cuttings for sale. So that's really what inspired me to really move forward with the, hey, Brian, can we ship these cuttings out to our members or to our orders that we're getting online? Hey, yeah, just tell me what I need to do. And so this has sparked the entire movement within our collective members area to where members are fulfilling orders now. And it's really special. And thanks to Brian, he's actually been able to come here every Saturday morning and visit with us between 10 and 2. We're helping him with a work trade where he can actually earn his lifetime membership by coming here and volunteering. Those hours are going to go towards his lifetime membership. And uh, he's been coming here for several months and he even dropped this cutting off here from his location in Newport Ritchie. This beautiful cutting right here, which is, whoa, really solid in the ground. And what's crazy is that this got here maybe about a month or two months ago. And about that same time, we planted this tree that you see right behind it from seed. Yeah, this is from seed. Check this out. That's from seed. <laughs> like three months. And it's, it's already seven, eight feet tall. And that's the power of growing. The, the natural hormone that exists in Moringa is, uh, is called zeatin. And it's the super fast growing hormone in Moringa and also Moringa is packed full of nitrogen. It's essentially just pure nitrogen. And so you can add it as a fertilizer to also your crops. And um, we're excited to share with you uh, some time here that we spent with Brian, really good friend of ours. He's really interesting, uh, very chill. And he's got his own company now, Moringa. He's fulfilling his goals and his dreams from originally reaching out to me, telling me that he wanted to change his career and he wanted to do nothing but Moringa. Now, as he's kept in touch and learned the, learned the ways, the tips and the tricks that we always give, he's act, acting on them, implementing them, making his YouTube channel, getting his URL, getting his LLC, you know, making posts and being active in the members area, letting people know that he's also a source that they can turn to for seeds and loose leaf and trees. And so now he's also done some work here with us th throughout the last couple of months and he's going to go out and make some harvests. So he's on the Moringa map as a harvester. If you'd like to get on the map as a harvester, just let us know. And he's on the map as a harvester of the Moringa map. And he's actually getting calls for people asking to harvest their trees and to possibly trade with them or pay them and we're working out special deals for members if they want to get wholesale rates on their moringa we weigh it out and we pay out and uh you can learn more about that process in the grow moringa collective and also 
just chill. Just chill with Brian. He's cool. Cool peoples. Love hanging out with him. And if you want to meet up with us here on Saturdays, he'll be here. I'll be here at Gromringa Farms in Plant City, Florida. Thanks, Brian, for the gift. And everybody, enjoy the episode. Peace. You're listening to the Grow Moringa Podcast, introducing you to a collective of Moringa growers who are simplifying regenerative agriculture for the future of farming. If you'd like to learn more about the Moringa tree industry without beating around the bush, you're in the right place. Stay tuned and be sure to join us in the members area for all the Moringa answers. Sign up at GrowMoringa.com, your home for growing Moringa online. Step for me and my Moringa journey. I've, I've seen your, your growth over the last couple of years. Thank Just getting you. to know each other, you know, it's taking time. Yeah, yeah, it's been a couple of years. Uh, that's kind of what I like to do is uh, take my time studying and then make my moves. I like taking my time getting to know people. Yeah. Everybody is so like quick that sometimes it robs me of that kind of time that I need to absorb say someone's new energy and so a lot of people want to get to know me like really fast yeah but I really appreciate our relationship because it's blossomed over three years four years mm -hmm. you know I, I remember seeing you a lot like on the lives and coming yeah. and asking questions yeah and I uh, visited your farm you know last year did a farm tour and I think it's been about a year since you've seen me in person since I've been back now yeah but yeah, uh, joining the collective has been a, a major step forward for me in this, and I'm really glad to be volunteering out here on Saturdays with you now, and just making the relationships and learning the processes in person. Yeah. It's been a big thing. It has. It's been really nice, and I, I see it. I see I see how you're, you're growing. I see how, like, the time that it's taking for you to absorb, like, all the little things that you can do yeah. with the Moringa. Yeah. And then how do you like make a business out of it? You know, it's just like it's definitely been a long process of um, learning, definitely. Um, you know, I studied it for years before I even found you. Uh, my journey really started uh, not for myself, but for my dog that I had that had a uh, heart condition that he was on conventional medications from veterinarians. He even had a cardiologist and eventually those medications reached the length of their ability to help him. So I started looking for holistic alternatives and found the most nutritious plant on the planet and started uh, researching it really for months on end before I even entertained the thought of growing it myself. And I found someone on Craigslist that happened to have uh, cuttings nearby me and I got some, stuck them in the ground, grew it, Start feeding the uh, fresh leaves to my dogs and their meals, and immediately saw a big change in his health, his energy. You know, when they told me that he was terminal, it brought him back from that. So, wow, it was really a, an amazing thing for me to witness to make me a true believer within, you know, the scope of what Moringa can do for not just people but i had applied for pets which i hadn't seen anyone else doing yet mm -hmm. so that was um a big change for me was growing something harvesting farming mm -hmm. for the first time even though i've always gardened and using it to actually improve health so doing that um promoted me to use it for myself eventually yep. And that was a major change again, where I started seeing my health improve, where things were starting to fall apart. And when I would take Moringa seeds, or, that's right, uh, that's right. We were gonna do take. We're, these we're gonna take some seeds right now. Yeah, these are from yours. This is from my trees that I've been growing wow. for three years at home. Look at that beautiful, nice little seed there. Awesome. And I eat the seeds. Do you eat the paper? I eat the paper and all. Yeah. Paper's yeah. good. Yeah. Shell and everything. Everything. I get that uh, that oil coating inside my mouth. I feel it. It's like bitter at first. It is at first. I've gotten used to the taste, yeah. as many experienced seed eaters will. I like it. 
but it, it gets really good. This is the once moment. you drink some water. Mm hmm. Mm. It's like instantly. Mm hmm. Wow. It's so sweet. To me, it's almost like a, a crystal light has been added to your water, a great flavoring or something. It really has. You know, uh, warriors used to carry the moringa seeds on them as an energy source and also gifts. You know, uh, when you go to a village or you're traveling back in the day, it was seeds like, I feel, I think like Peruvian uh, warriors and wanderers and uh, they would carry chia seeds on them because chia is from, I believe, the Andes Mountains range. Okay. Similar to like uh, potatoes, the originator of the potato, the original, uh, what do they call that? Starch or something like that. It's like a yak or something like that. The original potato. Mm -hmm. And so you would just carry stuff on you. So that way when you went into other villages, you would bear gifts very similar to how you are. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for my new drink uh, catcher. Yes, you're welcome. Beautiful gift. And it looks like the moringa tree, too. It does. Resembles the moringa tree. That's, oh, my goodness. Wow. Great shirt. Yeah, oh, you. I love it. Yeah. I love the wrinkles As above, in it too. so below. Oh, it looks great. Yeah. I love that, like, natural kind of, like, wrinkly look. and Yeah, yeah natural cotton. That's cool. Yeah, so I uh, started eating the seeds, consuming the leaf for myself, um, dehydrating it, drinking the teas, powdering the dehydrated leaf, making capsules myself at home with wow. a uh, little capsule machine that I have that makes a hundred of them at a time. And taking those really improved my health, my energy levels. And I started using it not just for daily life, but um, like you were saying, for people using it as warriors is for endurance. Yep. Um, I also work uh, seasonally for Bush Gardens Hollow Scream as a scare actor. And it's a very high energy job. It requires a lot of yeah. calories yeah. to go, you know, for hours on end like yeah. that. Yeah. And this year, taking this moringa, this is my that was my fourth year doing it. But I saw a major change in my energy. Wow. See, it's it's almost like this is my uh, my sport. Yeah. Like I'm an athlete, not really. But, yeah, you are. Uh, so I saw a major improvement in my energy levels. My performance was off the chart. And I didn't even have problems with like driving home for an hour afterwards and being tired or anything. I was fine. Great. So that to me was kind of like my aha moments with Moringa. Yes. Yeah. This has so many different applications, not just for humans, but yep. you know, now I was giving it to my dogs. Um, I also make fertilizer out of it. I feed it to my plants, the powder. <laughs> and, you know, I, I grind up aloe with the powder and I make all sorts of juices and just, I have a permaculture garden at home that I, I make my own amendments. Nice. Sort of like this one that I brought today. Oh, wow. Let me see that. Wow. This is uh, Moringa fermented plant juice. This is and great. it's super easy to make. Essentially, this is like the biostimulant. This it is, is but biostimulant. it's different than the process. That's just juicing leaves, I guess. I, um, how this, did you make this? This, I just uh, take cuttings of um, little chop off sticks when I'm stripping leaves. Mm -hmm. I take the sticks and the branches, yellow leaves. I take bad seeds, bad seed pods, anything that, you know, I was going to compost. And I put it all into one bucket. Yeah. And then it's filled out with water and just let it sit in the side of my house for six months. That's it. That's, this you is stir fermented it, plant juice. This and is... you let nature take over. And um, what will happen is it will get real moldy. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good mold, good yeah. bacteria. Yeah. It will start to stink. And what you can do is you can put a little bit of fresh mulch on top of that. Yeah. Or fresh uh, forest soil. Yeah. And that will neutralize the smell. Over you know, top of on, kind on of the like... top On the top of the surface of your water. And then put a lid on it. Awesome. Because at that point, it's kind of already kind of that, like a little thick like layer mm -hmm. of bubbles and yep. fermented plants. And the mulch and everything else and brings you... microbes into it. Wow. So what a great idea. let that ferment, let nature do its own thing over six months. You don't this even is, have to stir it. This and is homemade. Strain that off, yeah. And you're gonna want to dilute that down. But, yes. I mean, take a take a sniff of that. Oh, this is it's no, gonna it's gonna stink. No, a couple of knows. He tells me it's like this stuff stinks. But that's how you do it. It's the real deal. Yeah, that's great. <laughs>
but uh, very easy to make. You know, things like that I've been making at home. That's great. Um, that really is biostimulant. Yeah. Essentially. It is. It's just that the one that we make, USDA certified organic, it's got some preservatives in it, so that way mm -hmm. it doesn't smell or go bad yeah. or anything like that. But, yeah. But that's like preservative-free, like natural fermentation. Yeah, like anybody can do this at home. It doesn't just have to be Moringa. Nope. You can do this with any plant you want, and you will get all the properties of the plants within this liquid that you can spread to your other plants. Nice. So that has been uh, kind of my journey with Moringa. Now I just uh, have been taking a course online with uh, yeah. Mariko Gifford. Yeah. And uh, it's been a five-week course where I've been... Uh, learning how to become a Moringa ambassador. Wonderful. I so love I'm the just completing that. And that's uh, Mariko from Moringa for Life. That's right. Yes, she's over in California. She's been growing Moringa for 24 years. Wow. So, so there's a lot of experience to learn from her, and this is kind of her intermediate course, which um, I just am finishing it now. And actually, this interview is going to be a part of my final project for the course, nice. as proof of my Moringa outreach. Yep. To the uh, the community. Well, you certainly have. I mean, you're making yourself very well available here. You've been helping mm -hmm. out here several weeks in a row. We really enjoy your presence, and it's really helping us out. Like, just get some of these projects that we've been needing to get done out there. So, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Definitely. I'm, I'm happy to come and share any information I have with any of the uh, people that want to come out to the farmer's market. Yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to share any of our techniques as well. I mean, another thing I've been dinner? bringing out here, this oh, is a... Uh, wow. Bamboo biochar, another bamboo product bio you can make at home. Look at that. Just taking pieces of bamboo and I'm burning them in my grill and then layering them so that they don't turn to ash as they burn. You want to keep them in this charred state, mm -hmm. this charcoal state. Yep. And then you put it out with water when it reaches a certain point. So now this is a major like high rise condominium for microbes to move into. Yeah. But and this is not activated. It's not activated. It is virgin. It's raw. Yeah. How so, would you activate it? That's up to each user. You can do it, um, just throw it into your garden and let it happen over time. You can put this in your compost. Right, right. Uh, that does make, activate it. Mm -hmm, you can make certain uh, liquids to specifically activate it. Right. Some people will use urine. Yep. Um, it's ammonia, good nitrogen, ammonia, nitrogen. Mixer. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's just going to absorb all the nitrogen and yep. it's going to release it slowly back yep. out. So you want to fill it up. Otherwise, wherever you put it, it's going to absorb from its local area. Yes. So it's literally going to pull it from pull. the local area. So if it you already pull. put it in the local area full, yes. then it'll then it'll just yep. leach all that stuff out over time. And that's the purpose of that yeah. is to fill it up. And that's why I don't... Uh, personally inoculated with anything before um, I use it myself I'll put it within my compost bins but like I, I'm bringing this to Kendrick today to put in his compost bin so I didn't want to complicate it with any microbes from my garden my microclimate and all that just oh wonderful so you keep everything within your zone there. I got you yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. so things like this um, th those are products that I think are really gonna help uh, my garden and everyone else's garden because you can have all the great biostimulants and fertilizers and everything in the world, but you have to keep reapplying them. But when you put this biochar in your soil, it's going to hold that in there and you won't lose it. And also, like, if it does dissipate and you recharge it, mm -hmm. it'll pull it back in. So it's kind of easier yeah. to then re-nutrify re yeah. Yeah, because it's in there. And it allows access to water. All the nutrients from the nutrient cycling of your soil, food web, everything. It's it's just going to enhance your all your plant's ability to draw nutrients and hold on to them. And wow. they will grow much, much bigger. And this is from bamboo. That's from bamboo, which is said to be uh, the most um, porous of woods to mm -hmm. be biocharring. Mm -hmm that you get the some of the highest quality biochar. A lot of people commercially have bamboo biochar businesses. Yeah. But this is just something small I can do in my backyard, anybody can do, and uh, it can just help out your small backyard garden. And, you know, if you want to go a larger scale, there's other ways to do it, but then, you know, involves investments and infrastructure. Yeah. Are you scaling up your business now that you've had some time to yes. get into it? Yes, yes. I have, and a big part of that was joining the collective. 
and having the opportunity to actually start selling. Yeah. And so my uh, big thing was selling cuttings a few months ago. Mm -hmm. I had you were the first one. I, yeah, I think I was one of like your beta testers almost. Well, even in the season, because like March hit, all mm -hmm. the frosts came through. All of our trees here got leveled yes. to the ground. And then you, you're like letting us know like, hey, I've got cuttings. And I'm just yeah. like, how do you have cuttings? You're in Newport Ritchie. It, it's yeah. supposed to be a little colder there, but you live a little bit on a little bit Close of that, the water. that protection. Yeah, there's, there's a certain microclimate there. Plus, I just let them grow all, all over the winter. You know, I wanted them for seed pods. Yeah. And then once my seed pods were dried on there, I was able to take the whole branch for cuttings. I love how you said that because you're like having a purpose. Yes. And I get a lot of that yes. que question. And I end up saying, well, it just sounds like you're missing your why or your purpose. What's your purpose? And then after asking that to everybody in the collective, now more people are like yourself where you're like, I want seed pods. I, I want seeds, I want yeah. drumsticks, I want oil, and you have a focus. Mm, so I can have these. Wow. These are really nice. They taste great too. Yeah. We uh, we sift the wings and uh, we separate it and then we use the paper. Mm -hmm. And we're making uh, paper using uh, ancient Japanese paper making method. And uh, that way we can actually use it. We had some ideas where somebody was like, uh, what about like, gift cards and and even like an origami and then oh yeah. one of the big ones that we want to do is um pots for plants sure imagine taking the paper yes. and in the pulp form mm -hmm. putting it in a mold and then molding it and then take the mold off and you've got yourself a plant pot essentially made from a paper alternative to the pea pots yes yeah i like that a lot yeah Hey, so speaking of that, maybe it could also be used as soil, as a soil amendment inside of, of um, like little seedlings, because this could help aerate and it nutrify, and we have tons of it. Well, you have the seed cake, and we have the cake too. You so you're getting well. You separate your paper first, though. So. Hmm. I mean, it's all useful. This is why I love eating the seed raw too, is because I think that that's the way that you get the full spectrum. Oh yeah of all the vitamins, nutrients, minerals that are within the seed because once you start processing it, you strip your paper. Then you put it through your pressing machine and then you lost the, the seed hull. You just got the oil. There's, there's something lost in that process. Not that the product is inferior in any way at all. Um, but what I'm saying though is like, when I eat a seed, I drink the water. It tastes water sweet. Tastes sweet. But if you drink Take, the oil. Drink the oil. Mm -hmm. So there's something in the there's shell. something lost. It's, something in the shell so I like to get the full spectrum so I like to eat fresh leaf I like to eat whole seed me too fresh and is best yeah because uh, you know one of the things I've learned is that when you dehydrate you lose some of the vitamin C content oh yes if it you reaches know, over 100 degrees sure. when you're drying it mm -hmm. then vitamin C is dissipated it's not stable no no uh, meringue is very biothermal it wants to heat up and burn, especially if you just leave it piled up, the fresh leaves and also mm. it, it has to be very uh, carefully handled. And that's something I'm really going to want to hone in on, especially after taking this past course. And now I'm going to want to focus on your course. Yeah. And get my drying practices down, my processing practices really clean. Yep. I'll start looking at this stuff from a microscope. And yep. Really and going this, uh, in, bacteria mold. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing heavy metal testing. You know, making yeah. sure that the, each location that we get a supply from is is clean and go. And then on top of that, uh, getting laboratories to test the leaf as yes. nutritional testing yes. for food grade safety. So someone calls, hey, can can you can you come cut my tree, or can I come drop my 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 trees off, or can you buy my greens? Any of those questions above is yes, yes, yes. As long as your soil is tested, we have the nutritional testing. You're an active member. We know that you're participating in, in, in the courses. You're getting certified as a mm -hmm. grower. And that way we can ensure the level of quality and the standard. And, and we have um, really a community. Like a lot of people will say, well, I'm not really interested in that, in that membership stuff or all that other stuff. And I'm just like, I understand. It's, it's fine. But for right now with our limited staff, it's mm -hmm. the way for our members to kind of like keep an eye on everybody and also without having to hire necessarily employees, you take ownership 
and you and members are becoming literally so active within the membership it's relieving me of a lot of stress pressures yes. responsibilities people are giving themselves their their time they're volunteering like yourself and many mm -hmm. others within the member area yeah. you know going live every day on a webinar uh, has has brought you know most of all of us together daily to where it's like someone's like well what can i do what how can i help and I'm just like, well, could you could you do this and could you do that? And and I'm learning how to delegate, and that's really helpful. Yeah. And then it's also, um, you know, helping members to to learn and have a purpose. You know. Yeah, I really like the model that you moved towards with member fulfillment. Oh, of, that's of a big one. That too. was a big one. Yeah, it took a lot of weight off of your shoulders, I'm sure. Big time. Plus, it it helps us though. It gives us an opportunity to develop our businesses. Yeah, and that's what you were saying is. Winter came, I didn't have any cuttings, right. and then you're like posting pictures of cuttings, and I'm yeah. like, Brian, can you fulfill these orders? And he's like, send them my way. And this was kind of like our first uh, kind of trial run in sending you the order. We paid for the shipping, yeah. and we just sent you the order, and you slapped the, the, the cuttings in a box and shipped it, and then we paid you for the order. So when the money came in to, to the website, we're able to, you know, pay for the coupon. Yeah. Sometimes the coupon gets taken off, and we're paid for the affiliate link. Sometimes the affiliate link comes off, but then also taxes and shipping. We're paying for all of that, and then we're going to be giving you essentially fifty-fifty of the order. So if the order comes in for fifty bucks, we're giving you twenty-five bucks to put it in the box, and it's like a wholesale deal where we sell something for retail. We're able to pay you, the supplier, the member, the grower, a wholesale rate for your products. Yeah. So that's what I'm getting my head wrapped around is when someone says, Can, will you buy my, my Moringa? At first, I didn't know how to, to answer it because then it's like everybody will, will want me to, to buy it. And they're just yeah. going to come over and they're going to buy it. But buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And I'm like, we have to have the order in place first. So when the order is in place, then we can delegate it to the to the member essentially we have the buyer we're finding buyers and when the buyer comes in then we can delegate that order to a member it's tough though because a lot of members are like well how many orders am I going to get every every month how much am I going to make off of this and it's like starting off with us uh, we're going to give you as much as we can but it's also like a way for you to get your products going for your own business as well and the collective is supplementing yeah. that startup yes Greetings. I really hope that you're enjoying the interview so far. I wanted to come and show you the greenhouse where we're growing Moringa trees and shipping a 10 free Moringa tree special with each starter kit. It starts in these little pellets and we fill it with perlite. Then we'll put a seed in there and after about a few weeks it'll sprout into a tree. And we're shipping 10 of these in each package with a starter kit which comes with biostimulant, some perlite, some pellets, seeds, and some planting instructions. This is a beautiful way for you to get started and get your business going. If you want to be able to fulfill orders with us, so say you're able to grow Moringa trees just like this at your place and would like to fulfill orders, you can do so as a member of the Grow Moringa Collective. These can sprout within just five to six days. Most of the time it takes about two weeks for them to come up and then another two to three weeks for them to get to a point in which you can ship them. When you ship Moringa trees for the collective, you can also ship Moringa trees for yourself. And so it's a, it's a way for you to get your business going and also to get some orders right away. Inside each package, you can actually put some material, some reading material that helps promote your business. And there's lots of other tools actually in the Grow Moringa Collective that you can utilize to get your business started, uh, make income growing Moringa right away. Brian actually is taking advantage of the Grow Moringa Collective by becoming a harvester. And so what he's doing is he's grabbing some of the larger trees and utilizing the leaves by drying them and selling them at the farmer's market for tea. Moringa is so valuable that there's also uses for Moringa industrially. And that's because it produces 
a fruit known as the drumstick. And that fruit is high in oil, which you can use potentially as a biodiesel fuel. And also it's very good uh, topically and also cooking with. So the oil that's coming from the Moringa oleifera, which means oil producing, <clears throat> is actually very, very valuable and has many industrial uses, which is why we wanna share Moringa to anyone and everyone that's able to grow it. Now you can grow it in the summertime as an annual about this far apart like this on a raised bed and an annual means that it would die every winter but you can regrow the seeds every summer wherever you are pretty much anywhere in the world and if you're somewhere in, in, a, in, a, in a place that doesn't really freeze or doesn't really get any cold then you'll be able to grow moringa all year round as a perennial where it'll continue to regrow flowers and drumsticks and produce greens pretty much all year round. That's what we're doing here in Tampa, Florida and enjoying ourselves. And you might be asking why in a greenhouse, even in an ideal place where you can grow moringa. And that's because we can control the watering conditions. And I'll go ahead and show you how we're watering here in the greenhouse because this beautiful tray of little sprouts is coming up and, we, and it looks a little dry. So what we'll do is we'll put it in our tanks, our watering tanks, which have biostimulant already in them. So we'll go ahead and just place them right on top here. And then that way that soaks and wicks up the water from below. And it's also getting fertilized. The Moringa biostimulant essentially is made from Moringa leaves and it's a fermented plant juice, essentially, that's preserved and bottled. And you can use it because Moringa has so many vitamins and minerals that you can also use it to fertilize and amend the soil for your plants. And it's in a liquid form, so we can just pour it right in here. So look, that's already soaking up. And thanks to Brian and, and today's interview, we had a really great time. Would love for you to grab 10 free Moringa trees with each starter kit where you can actually get some biostimulant, try it for yourself. Actually, what you can do is you can stick the seeds in some biostimulant to help germinate your seeds faster. And like this one I just did yesterday is something that you can plant your seeds and then soak it in the biostimulant to help activate the microorganisms in the soil. We even grow the Moringa in a little bit larger of a, of a pot. This is considered a bio bag. And the roots will grow right out of this bio bag. And you can stick this in the ground. These ones are a little bit larger. And we've already cut them back several times. And we're gonna start getting them also either in the ground or potted up into bigger pots or shipped in the mail as well. Uh, thanks to Brian, he's helping us out here every Saturday at the farm. And if you'd like to volunteer, and help we would love to have you here every Saturday between 10 and 2 and you can also even work towards your membership so Brian is also paying off a lifetime membership by coming here every Saturday he's getting some hours in and we're happy to provide that trade trade-off so if you're interested in doing some work trade hours we'd love to have you here uh, and um, <clears throat> help us plant some more seeds so that way we continue to share the wealth of the Moringa trees in this new 10 free special. It's a great gift to be able to send trees and if at any time your trees come and you might have some trouble where there's no greens, it's okay, just cut it back and it'll regrow once you get it in the ground. Matter of fact, mostly all of these right here were already cut back and look, they're regrowing whole new greens. Moringa is also known as the never die tree because it never dies. There's so many different names for Moringa around the world. Oh, you can see this little white powder here that I have on the, on the, on the pellets. And that's just because uh, I noticed some, some ants were coming in here because we don't end up using the overhead watering system as much. We might do it maybe every other day, but ver mostly to uh, nutrify and keep the pellets wet, we, we dunk and, and, in the wicking system. So I saw some ants and I dropped diatomaceous earth here on the pallets. Diatomaceous earth is really helpful in keeping some of the pests away, not only on the leaves,
but also in the soil if you're having trouble with ants or any kind of critters or animals or anything. But you have to reapply the diatomaceous earth every time it gets wet or it rains or something. So um, thank you very much for watching. Please enjoy the rest of the video with, with Brian. Like, like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Ciao. An avenue for us to grow yeah. and to model you. Yep. But do everything that I'm do doing. Do everything that he's doing. Make well, the we videos. Do it on, yeah, we can all do it on our own. So, you know, speaking with that is now I want to eventually take my stuff to the farmer's markets. Yep. I want to have my own nursery where I'm growing trees at home. Your own brand. You know, in pots. My own brand. Mr. Green Jeans, I'm going to I be calling it. myself. I yes. Love it. Yeah. Mr. Green Jeans. Mr. Green Jeans. And uh, and you're going to go to the farmer's market. Yeah. And you'll have your own brand. Yes. And you'll also be able to fulfill orders on the side. Yes. You know, as supplemental income with us. And you'll be able to not only ship things out with our brand. So whatever comes in on the website, we mm -hmm. need to be, con you know, congruent. You know, we're all once a... Whatever you see on the website, and this is what I'm realizing too, is whatever a buyer sees on the website, that's what they want. They don't want to receive something from another brand. And right now, um, it's it, it's in the brand's best interest to really push the brand of the collective. And so we're asking everybody who's fulfilling the orders to not only have the collective branding for those orders, but to then put your own promotional material inside the box and say, yeah. Hey, I fulfilled your order for the collective. If you want to come by and say purchase from me next time, here's my website and here's a coupon for your first purchase at my website. Exactly. And that was something I did do with all the cutting orders. I on the packing slip I left a personal note with some planting instructions and thanked them personally for me, aka Mr. Green Jeans, just to get my name out there and to nice. plant that seed in their head that, I love that. I'm starting this uh, pseudonym, you know, this this side business with it but uh yeah the next step i want to take with this now is i'm going to meet with a food bank local to me uh probably within the next week and i'm going to start working with them because they have a hydroponic garden outside their um building there that they grow all sorts of food that they feed the community with i want wow. to start teaching them how to grow moringa oh great so that we can you know feed the community the hungry with moringa Apparently, the new statistic I've heard is that 30% of the world is having trouble finding food right now. That's terrible. Yeah. So That's one of the reasons why I became a farmer. Major reason. Exactly. Food deserts. Yeah, all the farmers are old and retiring or dying, and we need a new generation of farmers, and there's too many people that just need good, nutritious food that don't have access to it. That's where I was seven years ago. I, I was scared. I was scared that I wasn't going to be able to eat anything in the store. I thought that things were going to disappear and, and just in that prepping mode, wanted to really prepare myself and make sure that I was taken care of. And I didn't feel like anybody else was going to take care of me. So I said, I need to learn these skills of growing food. And so that's when I started taking uh, plant walks and herb walks with uh, like Andy Furk and uh, Green Green Dean, you know, a few people, and also Pete Canaris, I would go yeah. to his place. And you're in a really great location, actually, where you are, Newport Ritchie, you have a really great plant community. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually at that Tasty Tuesdays Farmer's Market for many years with Jim Kovaleski. Yeah. He was my my neighbor, you know, my, my farmer's market neighbor. He had his booth, and I had my booth right there next to his, and he started that farmer's market right there downtown by the library. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're right there. So yeah, it's like, Tuesdays. I don't think they do those anymore, I've heard. Uh, they've moved it to the weekend now, which is oh. better for me. Oh, really? So. Oh, yeah. great. So no Tasty Tuesday, but they have the market, but it's just I weekend. I think it's on a weekend now, and that's something awesome. I need to look into because I, I want to start doing that locally. You, you should know? get into that market. It, yeah, definitely. And I want to start having uh, members that are within my area. Yeah. Let's all meet up locally. Kind of like I'm coming out here mm -hmm. on Saturdays, but you had mentioned that one of your other podcasts that other groups are doing that with yes. you know, a local environment, and that really perked with me. I was like, oh, wow. let's do that. I'm already want to start looking at the members map and seeing who's around me. Yes. And send them a message and let's meet up. Exactly. Let's, let's work on something. Let's uh, 
go to the farmers markets together. Yeah, and even in the out. members area that we have, Mighty Networks, you have the ability, I believe, to create an event. So you could even create a Saturday event and have people meet up with you from the members area oh. in your area. So you yes. could create a Saturday event and have people come meet up with you there. So like in the members area, we have an event right now going on. It's live in the members area um, for Saturdays, meaning that it's happening here on the farm. And then you can go in and create an event, and it'll also be wherever you want it to be, too. People in the members area can see that. I like that. Yeah, I really need to get into more of these members area tools. And uh, There's a lot of stuff in there. There is. There is. I just switched over to the Teachables and connected them. Great. So I will be taking the course now that I just finished with Miracle's course. I'm jumping right back into your awesome. course. Awesome. And uh, I just hope to become an educator and further my whole Moringa journey, wherever it may take me. I think that's what people need to you know, realize is that it will take practice talking about it. And, 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 and doing this for members is helpful because you get yourself out there. Yeah. I want to promote all of our members' businesses through these podcasts yeah. and, um, and just have fun. You know, We're just getting to know each other. It's about the community. When I was at the farmer's market, everybody was asking, aren't you an architect, Kendrick? What are you doing at the farmer's market? And I'm like, you're in my house. I, I put, popped up a tent in the middle of a parking lot, and you're hanging out with me in here. I created space. That's architecture, mm -hmm. you know? And then beyond that, this invisible structure that we're building with the collective business model. Now, here, look at us. We've got Shauna on the mm -hmm. team. She's in Vegas. We've got other people on the team like Scott in California. Uh, we've got Liz in Texas now, and we have Parrish in New York City. So it's like I'm talking to, um, I'm talking to members in London, Africa, Australia, India on a daily basis. Like, we're in the live, and we've got people on it all over the world just coming in. And we're learning so much from people even just sharing, like, their backyard. Like, they'll take their laptops or they'll take their phone and be like, hey, everybody, look at my operation. And then they'll yeah. just show it really quick, and we all get to kind of see, like, their backyard. And that's what I'm also wanting to express to people is that we have these tools in our hands. Mm -hmm. And everybody is wondering and asking me, how? How do I do this? Take your phone, take a picture, and post it. It's really, it's tough, but it's easy. Yeah, uh, it, you're right. It is something I've had to do recently as well. I've had to create uh, social media accounts for Mr. Green Jeans. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of all that, as far as members recording their backyards, this weekend I will be putting videos up showing you guys how to make this. Oh, you will? Yes, I will. Where are you going to put that? It will be on YouTube. All right, we'll share Mr. your... Mr. Green Jeans. All right. Jeans is spelled with a Z. Awesome. And we'll put that up in the description as well. And um, and share your yeah. your Mr. Green Jeans yeah. YouTube video. Yeah, Mr. Green video. Jeans, YouTube. It'll be on Instagram. Instagram. I have a TikTok account now, so... Awesome. I can do all that stuff. Yes. And, uh, and the members area as well, Money Networks. That's right. Of course. And you can always reach reach uh, Brian even on the Moringa map. The You're map right there. has me all my info. Yeah, uh, Facebook as well, of course. So I love it because I'll get a call like, "Hey, do you have 200 trees?" And I'm just like, "Yeah, someone right on the map does." It's mm -hmm. kind of really loose right now, you know. I I could as an organization take that caller and have staff to like organize the sale and and, and do the sale right there, but it's just like. I'm kind of like wanting to really keep the collective light as far as like the, the body of workers that actually work the collective itself, like the HQ, so to yeah. speak, and really want it to be a, a member run, a member driven organization where we all have kind of like, um, you know, equal powers, you know, trying to do like a shared kind of ownership where we all get a share. Of I like this. that. Actually, I have the shares right here, actually. <laughs> These are these are our uh, lifetime shares. We're going to be giving you the, one of these shares too. Oh yeah, and we've got the embosser here too, where we'll emboss it. So we'll press it. Beautiful, I love it. And that's this is what you're working towards. You're doing. Yes. He's this doing like a, a work exchange with yeah. us, where Scholarship. he'll get the the lifetime the lifetime membership after a couple months of working here, volunteering, and then we'll yeah. provide you with a with a share of the company. Excellent. That's cool, right? Yes, it's very cool. Oh, man. So, 
this just has been kinda, great. Just kind of getting, you know, ourselves loose. We're, we're just starting this this podcast journey. It's going to be fun. We're hanging out. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'd be glad to come back anytime, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, we're about to go out, and here it is, 9 a.m. Saturday morning. We're about we're to go out. The and we're going to run the farmer's market. We're going to, you know, probably make a thousand bucks. I mean, that's the goal yeah. every day. Like, in my head right now, I'm at, like, a thousand dollars a day. Like, in order for this business to run... A thousand dollars a day? That's a thirty thousand dollars a month. That's a lot of pressure, but it's also kind of like a relief when you get to that thousand dollars. It's like everybody can get paid. Every not when I say a thousand dollars, it means a thousand dollars comes in, mm -hmm. but a large portion of that, eighty-five percent of that, goes back out to the members because they're now fulfilling the orders. So my whole goal is to keep the lights on, to see a commission off of each one of those orders. Uh, we need a thousand dollars a day in order for also other members to make the money that I, I, I have in my head like I want members I want to be able to share a thousand dollars a day with members you know so like when you fulfill the order 20 30 bucks 20 30 bucks 20 30 bucks is being shared in the in the total uh, profit I like that I'm down it's cool Looking for some more Moringa opportunities, so it's it's growing. The whole collective is growing. I can I can feel it. You know, I've been watching you for a couple of years and seeing the growth, and now finally I feel like we have taken off the launch pad. We have. Yeah. It's nuts. The amount of people that are hitting us up about the acreage that they have is 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 wild, mm -hmm. and that's kind of our next step is. With all the land and all the moringa that we have now being grown, where do we process it? Yes. So that's what we're yeah, getting to right that's, now. That's something I need to focus on too, is processing and... Yeah, not just processing at home it. for the farmer's market, because I mm -hmm. want people to know that you can process it at home for Small the farmer's batch. market. Yeah. Small batch, cottage rule industry, mm -hmm. you're good to go. Yeah. But as soon as you want to sell it on the website, it's got to go through a, a facility that yeah. has been certified for food, especially right. if you're doing food. Now, here's the thing. One of the ways that we can teach our members to avoid any kind of pressures with rules and regulations is to grow Moringa for plants yes. as a fertilizer, like what you are, mm -hmm. like what you're doing right there. And then also growing Moringa for pets, pets and animals, and which animals. you talked about as well. And then only after you've made some money off of those two things first, then go to people food. Yeah, because then you can really tighten up your processes yep. and have it USDA clean facilities. I mean, there's so many ways to do these processing facilities. I've been thinking about uh, shipping containers. Yep, yeah, we talked about shipping I've been thinking about containers. pulling up on a farmer's property with a 24-foot enclosed trailer and just dropping it off, and that's yep. our dry room. Mobile drying centers? Mobile drying centers. I love that. And then because the next day, the mobile processing center pulls up, and the trailers are back to back, no swapping way. them over, Whoa. grinding them, separate clean. And I was just thinking about that on the drive up here. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. So it's, trailer goes on site. Trailer goes on site. It Large dries. Trailer. It dries. dries it, but mobile. it takes a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So once that's dry, then you can link up. Another uh, smaller trailer comes with clean facility inside a laboratory that. Processing, grinding, encapsulating, pressing seeds. Or even what if that little mobile know. one that's on the farm can 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 go, can leave? Because once all the leaves sure. are in there, yeah, absolutely it could. Then it, that trailer could then be taken to a processing mm -hmm. facility where it could be dried. Yeah, it doesn't need to sit there. In the, it could still be dried for a couple of days in the trailer, mm -hmm. but then from there it could link up to the. And in the processing facility could be a mobile unit as well. Yeah. Like these don't need to be big spaces. This is what I'm also coming to the conclusion that a micro ghost kitchen yes. could also serve us as a processing. Like, exactly. what about a takeout spot that went out of business and has stainless yeah. steel appliances or at least a back area that's set up for that food safety wise where the bathrooms are you mm -hmm. know, separate and everything like that. And um, and put a dry room in the back and a small retail shop in the front, very small retail shop in the front that could serve us where when someone's like, hey, can I come drop off my greens? 
We say yes, they can bring it in the back. We pay them wholesale right then and there, but then we process it, yeah. bring it out to the retail, and the retail can also serve as um, shipping as well. So like that shipping, it can become a shipping area. So like when, that re when the products go to the retail in the front, they're there in the front, they're in the glass, right? People can walk in and, and get it at certain times, but it's also when we get so many orders on the website, that particular chapter location can then pick up the online orders and then ship online orders from there. So it's like, say you're running the Newport Ritchie Processing Center and we've got 50 orders that just came in from anywhere in the country, really, but we want to give you 10 of them. We're just going to send 10 orders over to you and you delegate those orders amongst your staff and your helpers that are there, the members that are there with you locally in that area. You guys split the profits, however which way. That sounds like something that would fit great downtown Newport Ritchie there. It would. They've been yeah. bringing that up. Ooh. I looked at a small commercial mm. space. It's about $3,000 a month for 2,600 square feet. That's quite a bit of square footage, though. I'm thinking something even as small as 500 to 1,000 square feet. You know, because those mobile trailers, they could be 100 square feet, right? So what can we do out of 500 square feet? How about renting a U-Haul storage unit and making a total clean room inside? That's an AC-controlled unit. Yes. I mean, how cheap is rent on a storage unit like that per month? Yeah. Versus buying a retail space. Oh, I did that. Storefronts and all that. You I did, did that. Oh. I did that for my first two years. Great. I lived out of it. Mm -hmm. I lived out of it. It was a... It was a little storage unit. It actually had a front door and a window. Mm -hmm. I, I built a wall to where I had a small little office, kind of like this, where I just had my desk, and you could open up the door, and I was there in a small little office. But then I had a wall that I built, and I and then walked to the back, and that's where I had my processing facility, dry racks, blenders, and everything in yeah, there. Yeah, I like that. And it was, it was essentially a storage unit on the ground. It was a ground-level it wasn't one where like you walked into the building. Okay. It was like it had its own access sure. from the outside. From outside yeah. yeah. Uh, it was great. It's actually there on 38th Avenue in St. Pete. They might even nice. have some spots open. We should probably even go back there to see if we could get one. That's St. Pete, but there could be one in Newport Ritchie. There's one two minutes from my house, a U-Haul climate controlled walk-in giant building they built just like four years ago. It's new and yeah, I'm like, if I ever have too much loose leaf or to process, you know, yeah. from a harvest, I was thinking about setting up a dry room in there somehow, some way. It could be. It could be good. I think there's a few food safety things that we would want to maybe add to the space. Yeah. I'm not sure if it would need to be completely sealed, you know. Ozone machine? Ozone machine. Got to have an ozone machine. Yeah. And a dehumidifier. dehumidifier so yeah. where's the water going to go? You got to make sure that you have drainage for the water. So you got to be able to. And it goes into a bucket of moringa water. Okay. Okay. You can drink those that water. buckets. Fill up fast. I don't know. Okay. So fast. We'll figure it out. We'll figure all that out. You know, because we'll get an IBC. Thank you. I, I just love your problem solving. Like you just we'll go it. big. Go big. I love it. <laughs> I want to get a warehouse um, that we can share. I want to get something that we can share. Yeah. I'm wondering if the collective is doing like the the McDonald's uh, kind of thing where it owns the land and then it and it rents the space out to the mm -hmm. to the members. So what I would probably want to do as an owner of the collective myself too is just maybe take some of the funds, purchase the processing facility, and mm -hmm. then just let the members pay for the mortgage. You know, of it. Yeah, you know, so yeah. like if you and five other members have access to that building, then you're just making sure the rent is paid between the five of you. But between the five of you, you guys are bringing Moringa in, processing it, selling it to where you can pay the rent and also profit, make profits. I like that. I know there's a lot of ways to work this. I know there's a couple other members in the group that are into real estate and mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. a lot smarter than me on that. So if they want to help out, let's do this. Yes. Let's all do this. Yeah, we actually just had a post. A lady was interested in renting her land. Did you saw see that? that. You saw yes, that? yes. So I was asking her, do you have a fence? Mm -hmm. And is it on a well? And do you have electricity? 
And what are some of the accommodations that your renters will be able to use? Make it appealing. Do they have easy access? Yeah. You know, does it flood? You know, given the location, yeah. does it freeze? Are you interested in doing a lease all year or is it seasonal? Is it yearly or is it, say, five year? You know, because like if you put a, tr a tree in the ground, I would want to benefit from that space, you know, for five years. Someone offered me 50 50 split off an eight acre property uh, for a year. And I'm almost like, I kind of want it for 10. Yeah, it's too short. Yeah. Yeah, so we're working out some of these these conversations yeah. and through these conversations, yeah. you know, just getting to know uh, people. There's a lot of, uh, say, expectations, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I'm really trying to get good with the communication, what we can do, what we want to do, and then, you know, what's really practical. Yeah. I'm also a dreamer, you know, and I dream big, and I feel like we could do anything and everything, right? But then it comes down to, well, let's really get into the numbers. I have a lot of people that are helping me with accounting and making sure that things do come out on the back end profitable. So that way they make sense. And it's having me to refine, refine the business model to where we're coming to this, this momentum now where it's member driven, it's member owned, it's, it's member, member fulfillment, yes. you know, everybody that's involved in it. And it's not just on my hands anymore, which is so freeing. It's like, ah, oh, oh, you can just call the math and all the members are there. And, and, and if they don't know the answer, you at least got a phone number. You possibly have a new friend that loves Moringa too. You have you have possibly their email if you if they're on the phone, get their email, and then let them know that you'll call them back when you have it in stock. You know, not to be afraid, but we have a lot of people saying like, oh, I don't know, I'm not ready. I don't know if I'm ready yet to get calls. And I'm like, just get the call, save the number, and now you're building your own business. Yeah, there's you know, an opportunity there. Huge opportunity there. Mm -hmm. Data. Yeah, you know? And I just sent them to you. And I'm literally like, go to the map, go to the map, take a look, give give our members a call. They want to talk to you. They want to tell their story. They, especially if you're local, you guys are going to be neighbors and get to know each yeah. other. Yeah. Definitely. This local model is like, it's like building upon itself, and I I just I'm loving seeing it because now I don't get stressed when somebody calls me from California and is like, hey, can I get ten trees? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll just have my guy in California ship them to you. He's like, no, I want them from you. And I'm like, yeah, they are from me. I mean, they're from my from a member of mine, you know, and, and I didn't have to travel 2,000 yeah. miles. I only traveled maybe a couple hundred miles. I didn't have to go through all that stress. And That way it's localized to that climate as well. Yep. I, that's what I'm looking at is, you know, California may be hot, we're hot, but we're totally different. Yeah. I'm looking at you fossil know, fuels too. I'm looking at energy and consumption and time and... Yeah. And so you can just put a seed in the mail to California, let them grow it. Yep. Yep. It's yeah, we do tree. ship a lot of seeds, but um, sometimes people want like mature, like yeah. big trees. And we're starting to get members all over the world that have a supply ready to go. If you're not sure like how much you're going to make starting off, then just um, you just kind of have to feel it out. You kind of have to just maybe take a risk and and just go for it plant a thousand seeds and and see what sticks a lot of people sometimes they try to work the numbers out so much that they don't end up doing anything they get analysis paralysis you know where they're analyzing they're like, I don't see where this works but you didn't yeah. account for that mm -hmm. love and energy that you got for planting that seed and being able to gift that tree yeah it speaks a different language than numbers yeah <laughs> I mean everything's numbers but it will it will tell you what to do even if you don't know that you're hearing it just spend some time with moringa and the plants will guide you on your journey I, I truly believe that it has for me i love to just go spend time around the, the tree just stand underneath it you just be around people that uh are involved in it yep they may say that you're a dreamer but you're not the only one yeah so, <laughs> I'm really glad to be here, be a part of this collective, do this podcast and get the word out to the, you know, the internet and the world. Thanks, brother. Thanks for being here. You're welcome, man. Thank I you for having it. me. Yeah, man. It's been great. I'll see you soon. All right. Peace.